Postcard day in Calgary for the week four finale in a showdown for first in the West. Bombers and Stamps collide at McMahon. Tonight on the marquee, two of the most dynamic receivers in the Canadian Football League. Nick Moore for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers leads the league in clutch second down receptions. And on the other sideline, Eric Rogers is number one target for Bull Levi Mitchell. Targeted 24 times. He's caught 13 and has a couple of touchdowns. John Hupnagel looks for his 50th career home victory on a short week. First time he's faced a Western Division opponent this season. And it's Michael O'Shea's Winnipeg Blue Bombers 1-0 on the road. They won their season opener in Saskatchewan. The Bombers ending an 11-game losing streak here at McMahon last November. Early season measuring stick game for this improving Winnipeg team, although their head coach has said there's no banners going to be handed out for a win if they got one today. There's Tim Brown back, Liram Hirolahu to kick it off, and we're underway in the foothills, and that one over the head of Brown, and he will field it in the end zone, and it looks like Winnipeg's going to have a very early 1-0 lead. So Bo Levi Mitchell coming off a 300-yard passing performance against the Argos on Monday leads out this offense. And he's got new offensive linemen in front of him. On At left tackle is Gary Williams. He has NFL experience out of Kentucky. And they'll bump Spencer Wilson from guard to the right tackle and put in second-year Brad Erdos at right guard. Losing both tackles last week against Toronto. Unbelievably in the same series. Dan Federkow, Edwin Harrison both going down with broken legs. And hand off early to John Cornish, who has uh, had some of his biggest games against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, including his number one performance, 208 yards, a couple of seasons ago. He starts with a five-yard run. Well, anytime you play against Calgary, even though the numbers haven't jumped off the page for Cornish just yet, he likes to play the Bombers, so the pressure squarely on the shoulders of these guys, starting with Sam Hurl in the middle. Your middle linebacker is your first run stopper, and then behind him is Maurice Leggett, the safety. I think DeMon Washington may be matched up on Eric Rogers tonight. We'll watch for that. Five for quarter, second and five. Fake the handoff, and Mitchell to the outside, unable to connect with big Jeff Fuller. And it's a two and out to start for the Stampeders. Breakout game this season for Bull Levi Mitchell against Toronto. We're 300 yards passing. Off to a slow start with a two and out tonight. So Rob Maver, who has averaged 50.2 a punt, sends it downfield. And the leading tackler. 52-yard punt, Troy Studemeyer. Back in the Winnipeg lineup, good cover downfield for the Stampeders. Drew Willie leads the Bombers out. 1-0 versus Calgary. Didn't play in that second game late in the season. Here's the starters to watch. We mentioned Nick Moore off the top. Favorite target for Drew Willie. Targeted 23 times. Stanley Bryant returned, signed as a free agent with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the offseason. The all-star for the Calgary Stampeders at left tackle last year. And Clarence Denmark targeted 13 times in three games. Bombers start at their 24 with four receivers to the near side. And early motion on that offensive line. Might have been Stanley Bryant. Procedure. Winnipeg, number 59. Five-yard penalty remains first down. A couple say the right tackle, Jace Daniels, first. Well, a couple of the matchups, though, we're going to watch here tonight. And one will be, of course, Stanley Bryant against Charleston Hughes as they practice together thousands of times. Did the one-on-one -on -one drills. Charleston Hughes saying this week, I taught him everything he knows. So first and 15, Willie. Steps up and gets back close to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. 
Take a look at the starters to watch for the Calgary Stampeders on defense. I wanted to put Quinn Smith in there because of what he did last week going from defensive line to play guard when they lost both tackles the Stampeders and did a real good job in that final drive. There's Charleston Hughes the matchup against Stanley Bryant. Jamar Wall get matched up on Nick Moore tonight. Game ball for Quinn Smith for that performance. A three man front for the Stampeders on second and ten. And Willie steps up once again. And Drew Willie is going to get brought down short of the first down. Tackle on the play made by Deron Mayo. Nine for Willie. And a decision early for Michael O'Shea. Yeah, he's taking a good look at it. He got just short of the first down marker. Not sure where they mark his forward progress. They're going to bring the chains in. And remember, the coaches don't. They, they can't ask for a measurement any longer. This is a decision made by the officials on the field. Pocket sort of collapsed on him in a hurry, so he didn't get a chance to even go to the second and third option. That's how close it is. Yeah, closer than it first looked. So Willie gets them within a chain length or two, and that makes the decision for Michael O'Shea pretty easy. It does. It'll still be a little nerve wracking in your own end. And short yardage has been a bit of an adventure across the league this year. Couple of early runs for Drew Willie, who might have been inspired by what he saw from Travis Lule last night. 105 yards rushing, leading the Lions over the Rough Riders. So the short yardage team comes in, third and inches. And the yep. plunge, a good surge behind Dominic Picard. And a first down as Brian Bra moves the chains. Yeah, went that left side. Dominic Picard, Chris Greaves, and Stanley Bryant got a real good push up front. And Brahm, Brahm got that first down and then some. Bombers have one first possession touchdown this season. It came in there. Loss against Hamilton. A look at Chris Greaves, the left guard, in his 60th game start. First down up at the 35. Into the hands of Paris Cotton off the right side. And he gets over the 40. Man, a pickup of six. Much improved O-line in front of Drew Willie. That was the priority in the offseason. And that's why they signed Stanley Bryant. Paid him more money than Calgary was willing to pay. And... The all-star is at left tackle, anchoring that offensive line. That's been the biggest improvement for Winnipeg, one of the reasons they're 2-1. and one. So the Bombers haven't put one in the air yet. Second and five. Short drop, flag comes down, and they're going to halt play here. Nick Moore made the catch, but the whistle had already sounded. Procedure, Winnipeg number 66. Five yard penalty remains second down. So that's against Stanley Bryant. Ripped up a little bit to play against his old team. I know it doesn't matter because of the procedure, but I got to show you this block by Cotton on Mayo on going through the A gap. That's between center and guard. He steps up in there, protect his quarterback. Nice job at the point of attack, even though it pushed, it was pushed back because of the procedure call. Too many of those procedure calls this year. So it's second and ten after the penalty. Willie from the pocket. He's going to let it go. Deep Clarence Denmark in behind coverage. And it's a Winnipeg touchdown. 75-yard strike. Willie to Denmark. That's his fourth 30-plus catch on the season. Has 167 yards. But this guy's getting it done down the field. And he did that last year as well. Clarence Denmark in behind everybody. Safety Josh Bell gets caught looking at Drew Willie. He steps up nicely in the pocket, puts air under it, and Denmark tracks it down. Longest play from scrimmage for the Bombers this season. The first touchdown for Clarence Denmark, who led the Canadian Football League in pass plays over 30 yards last season. So that turns out to be the first pass of the game, and... Drew Willie made it worth waiting for. 
So Hirulahu to attempt the extra point. This has not been automatic for Hirulahu. Four of seven for the Western Special Team Player of the Year last season. He's got that one. And what a start for the Bombers. Opening possession touchdown as Drew Willie dials up long distance to Denmark. Everybody in coverage on a four deep zone defense and when you play four deep zone you're not supposed to get beat deep. But 89's got some flat out speed and he showed it. Didn't score an offensive touchdown. Last week in the victory against Montreal a, an eight nothing lead here and Tim Brown on the return trying to pick his way to the 20 and he'll get stopped short. Clarence Denmark lines up as the wide receiver He doesn't do anything fancy in the row. Let me show you the four deep there he is there now the zone defense from Calgary looks like this. They split the field in quarters one here one here one here and one out here now as they go back Josh Bell gets locked in looking at this short crosser and he doesn't see Clarence Denmark sneak in behind him and there is the one seam that is open Denmark gets in behind everybody and goodbye. So the Stamps who have not scored a first quarter point in the last two games are down by eight as they go back to work a crosser to Jeff Fuller into traffic and Sam Hurl the former Calgary Dino brings him down quickly gain of three for the Stamps. Denmark's got that flat out speed and you know last week the offense you mentioned Chris did not score an offensive touchdown they'll take the win for sure you've got to win in all three phases or at least two of the three but you know Drew Willie after that throw his first of the game was excited to start to contribute when it comes to the scoreboard. And another cause for concern for John Huffnagel another offensive lineman has been shaken up here early. It's the center Pierre Laver too. In last week in the second quarter Edwin Harrison Dan Federkyle almost back to back go out with broken legs and now Carl Lavoie has to come in to replace an old Laval teammate Laver too. Lavoie getting set to make his CFL debut when we come back. Innocent looking play here. Pierre Labertou's working one on one with Jake Thomas. And looks like he gets his arm caught on the push. And you'll see right here he reacts right after the play as the ball is caught and then he turns around and grabs that left arm and elbow. Well they can't buy a break can they? On that offensive line. Good thing for the Stampeders. They're probably deeper at that position than any other team in the league. It's second down and six, and Mitchell overthrows Jeff Fuller down the rail. Well, the you know, and this is even bigger, Chris, for a couple of reasons. One is Pierre Laver, too, is the guy who is going to try and get the young players around him lined up right. So he's got Spencer Wilson in a different position at tackle. He had Gary Williams in his first start. And he was the guy that was supposed to coordinate that. Now they're going to put that responsibility on Carl Lavois. And Lavois has got to also make the checks up front and call out the stunts and blitzes in the D line. He studied up. Rob Maver again Studemeyer back in the bomber lineup. Missed most of camp with a broken hand. But this is why they're excited to get it back. Good return across midfield and dropped at the Calgary 50 yard line after a 57 yard punt 28 on the return. Bryant returns to Calgary six games with the Stampeders and twice all CFL with more on him. Here's Jermaine Franklin. That's right Chris you know it was just mentioned a little earlier by suits they've been going head to head Stanley Bryant and Charleston Hughes for years and Hughes did go so far as saying he taught Bryant everything he knows but when it comes to his own arsenal Hughes said he held back just in case a situation like this turned up. 
So Bryant can expect to see a, a few new tricks up Hughes' sleeve coming up through this game. Now, while Bryant is not a stamp anymore, he's still close with his teammates. He did have dinner with Edwin Harrison last night. Remember, Harrison broke his leg badly last week. Well, it's an all-star matchup. We've seen Bryant the procedure call, and now looks like Charles Hughes. Calgary, number 39. Has Five-yard penalty. Hughes is excited. First Jumped down. offside. They're both excited. Stanley Bryant doesn't flinch. He, he hangs in there, but the guy he's gone head-to-head -head with in practice for years is a little excited to get this matchup started. We'll watch it all night long for you folks and see how the two All-Stars go at it tonight. Apparently Hughes taught Bryant everything he, he knows. Yeah, it's, we'll see. First and five, Paris Cotton straight ahead and down, into guys. that log jam close to a first down. This has been such a house of horrors for the Bombers, but off to a good start here and a chance to enhance the lead. Charleston Hughes got two sacks after three games, so he's on his game. And Stanley Bryan, as I mentioned, anchors a much improved Winnipeg offensive line. Two-time All-Star. Best against best. Good to see, too, that Stanley went and saw his old friend Edwin Harrison in the hospital. A lot of respect. They, yeah, absolutely. They started together here. Interesting that two guys fighting for the same job and still as close as those two were and still are. Well, the other thing that, that Bryant will have is he'll have all the Charleston Hughes trash talking probably memorized and can throw it right back at him. And I'm not sure that Bryant is that type of guy, but you know 39, he likes to talk. Bombers have a first down. Calgary 43 yard line. Cameron Marshall in at the running back spot. And they come back the other way on a cross buck. Paris Cotton with the carry and a flag flies. And it's going against the Bombers. Stanley Bryant with a down block there. Didn't get engaged with Hughes. Holding Winnipeg number 69. 10-yard penalty Repeat. First down. That's the youngster, the number two pick in the draft out of Calgary, Suk Chung. Yeah, Suk Chung was the guy who got the holding, and he was blocking Hughes on that play. He pulled and came around the left side. Part of the revamped new look here. Bryant knew at left tackle. Dominic Picard back at center. Chung at right guard. So first and 20. And look at what a move. Into the secondary, a first down and more down to the 23 yard line. 30 yard run. One shy of his season high, but good looking run by Paris Cotton. Well, Suk Chong and, and Jace Daniels, they get it done on the right side of the offensive line for Winnipeg, and they seal it. Now Jeff Heck gets upfield a little high, so he overruns it. That gives Cotton a little bit of room in the open field. Now he's got to make the safety. Josh Bell miss. A couple guys from the secondary, and away he goes. First big play run surrendered by Calgary this year. And now it's Denmark on the hitch outside. And he can't get by Fred Bennett on the corner. But a big run is considered to be 20 yards or more. That's the first time a team has gash the Calgary defense for that distance so far this season. Fifth in the CFL in rushing coming in to this week's game. Paris Cotton had a big opener against the Rough Riders 108. He had only 66 in the next two starts but off to a good one here. Second and eight. Here comes the heat. Willie gets it away. Darvin Adams interfered with in the end zone. And flags are flying. As Adam Berger was over there in coverage. And there's also a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Pass interference, Calgary. Number 28. Unnecessary roughness, major foul, roughing the passer, Calgary, number 12. Ball will be placed on the one yard line 
First down Winnipeg. So it's Brandon Smith in his 100th game called for the P.I. and Jawan Simpson with the roughing the passer. Here's roughing the passer Jawan Simpson. Now well, it's first and goal so they set up so we'll get to that first with Brian Brom and the short yardage group. Following Picard in for the touchdown. In behind Dominic Picard and Suk Chung. And Winnipeg has a two touchdown lead. That second short yarded situation where the Winnipeg O line has won the battle. Nice and low. Underneath the pad level of the D line for the Calgary Stampeders. Seven plays, 53 yards. They hit a bomb to Denmark on their opening possession and get a pass interference on a deep pass by Willie to Darvin Adams. Well, this all star secondary for the Calgary Stampeders isn't scaring. Drew Willie at this point. Not intimidated by them at all. Taking some shots deep. Ira Lahu for the extra point. And he puts that through and a bit of a shocker here in the opening quarter as the Bombers have opened up a 15-0 lead. On the goal line, Darvin Adams first on the PI on Brandon Smith. He go, he has the goal route now. Smith's going to make contact, so this is illegal contact right here that pushes him out of his lane, and that's enough for illegal contact. It turns into pass interference because the ball is thrown in his direction, and then the second penalty on the series was Juwan Simpson on a late hit on Drew Willie coming on the blitz. Ball gone. A bit of a hit and that was real close. I thought the P.I. though was a legal contact that turned into pass interference. That one was borderline on the late hit on Willie. Either way down on the one yard line and they finish off. Good short yardage team. Brian Brom finishes it off. There we go. So two possessions Winnipeg, two touchdowns, two possessions for Calgary, and a pair of two and outs. Ira Lahu boots it downfield, and Tim Brown five yards deep, and he's going to concede another point. Wow. Fans don't like that. A little surprise that time. It's now 16 nothing. A couple of... Ira Lahu kickoff points. Well, and you know that Tim Brown wants to get going. He, he's had he had a couple called back last week and or on Monday. And you see Mark Killam, the special teams coach, instruct him, go ahead and take that out. That's okay. You're five yards deep. You can go ahead and take that out and let's see you put a show on. He had a couple of big returns called back. Yeah, I think he's poised last for a week. big one. I think Tim Brown is poised for a big return. Stampeders have now been outscored 44 to 7 in the opening quarter of games. Check that 45 now with the kickoff point by Hiralahu. They got to sort out their O line situation and make sure. I don't know how many pages of the playbook have been thrown out here in Calgary. Such a young, such a young offensive line. Carl Lavoie, the number nine pick in the draft, had some shoulder injuries, er, sit, shoulder issues in camp, and was just ready to come off the injured list when the injured list got filled up by a couple more offensive linemen. Quick hitter over the middle, incomplete. 
intended for Markway McDaniel as we go back to Jermaine Franklin. Chris Pierre Laver too came off injured on the last series. He was favoring his left arm and when he got to the bench the training staff gave him a number of resistance train uh, resistance exercises to see how much strength he had in his left arm. He is still on the bench. He has an ice pack on the left side of his neck. The positive news is he still has a helmet, but I should tell you, Chris, that when the players on this side of the bench saw that it was Laver 2 down, a number of colorful language came out. you got to be kidding me with a much more colorful language. Here's Mitchell trying to take off, and he is swarmed well short of the first down, and it's a third consecutive 2-0. and out. Well, you consider that yeah. four guys now that were expected to be starters on that five-man offensive line have been injured. Craig Hitt hasn't been able to get into the lineup yet with concussion issues in camp in the preseason. And now Fetter Kyle along with Harrison and Laver too. Last week Dave Dickinson took a lot of pages out to make the adjustment. He put a nice package in for this game and now he's got to change that. In Maver kicking to Studemeyer. That is 31. He'll bubble back the other way. Anything there? Oh, there's the football. And does Calgary get it? They do. And the Stampeders needed that. The fine line there for Michael O'Shea. He wants Studemeyer to do his thing and and cut him loose to to make that big return it's a fine line between that and just getting positive yards getting your offense back on the field and, and maintaining momentum in this football game but you know you, you can't tell a talented returner to get too conservative look like the long snapper the veteran Randy Chevrier came up with the football and a big break for the Stampeders still looking for their initial first down First and ten at the 30. Hand off Cornish. Room left side. And Cornish spilled down at the 20. But close to 10 on the carry for Cornish. Got to be good down Main Street. So Zach Anderson, Hunter Harlan, Sam Hurl. And this time it's Maurice Leggett, the safety, who's going to step up and make a tackle in the open field. Or, or John Cornish probably picks up another 10, 15 yards. And that's a good one to just reach across and bring down. A guy who likes to play against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, averaging 140 yards a game against them over the last few. In that stalwart defensive tackle, Bryant Turner out of the lineup with a hand injury. Drew Tate searches forward behind that remade offensive line, and there's the first first down of the game for the Stamps. You're gonna have to keep it simple up front, and and we should see a lot of John Cornish. I mean, you do anytime. But Bo Levi Mitchell, Dave Dickens are going to have to keep it simple for Carl Lavoie so that he can concentrate on what he sees in front of him, the defensive line. Because he's got to make the calls. Once they break the huddle and the protection is called in the play, now you can see him pointing to try and make the calls. And the adjustments up front. Mitchell back in, full receivers wide side. Mitchell has a wide open Eric Rogers. Touchdown. Good protection. Three plays after the fumble. And a 19 yard touchdown pass from Bo Levi Mitchell to Eric Rogers. Good protection. They're putting it together on the fly. But right at the middle of your screen, Harlan going one on one on Carl Lavoie. He holds his own there. You saw him point out who should have who up front. Gave Bull Levi Mitchell lots of time to get it to Rodgers. Merrick Rodgers has his third touchdown of the season at a 100 yard game against Toronto last week. The guys in the truck spotted Lavoie on the limp after that play. That's, that's all they need. But he's hanging in. They're going to go for two. Try to get those kickoff points back. Short drop, quick hitter, and it is two for Mark or for Anthony Parker. It's going to be a flag. There's a, a flag. flag down. Yeah, it's just who initiated contact. There was a little push from Parker. I think it was Demond Washington. 
Washington indicating that this is going back and you could see that Lawah not happy because he's hurt. So it got worse after the two point play for Lavoie. Offensive pass interference. Calgary, number 35. 10 yard penalty will retry the convert. So let's see if Lavoie can stay out for the retry. And Quinn Smith better get set to get his offensive line jersey. There's the matchup with Anthony Parker. You'll see the push off on DeMond Washington right there to turn around and catch that. That was the penalty call. That'll put him back. Another try at the two point convert again, and Lavois <laughs> hanging in there. This is getting weird, though, isn't it? It is. Second try for two, and they get it again. Catch made by Eric Rogers, who got the touchdown, and the Stampeders have cut. The bomber lead in half. Lavoie is gutting it out. He didn't have anyone to block on that second attempt at the two point convert, but he can barely get off the field. So there's Lavoie making his way to the sidelines. Well, this is on the touchdown. Again, this is where he gets rolled on a little bit on that left leg. Looked like it was Jake Thomas. So he's, he reacts there. Now he's got to get up. Now he's got to go to that first attempt at the two-point convert and was upset there. So he goes to the two-point convert. And he's got to take on a block there again. And again, it's Jake Thomas. Gets worse. And on the second attempt, he didn't have anybody to block because of the stunned up front, but could barely get off. A costly fumble by Studemeyer, and now it's an eight point game, and the momentum has gone the other way. Good return here. By Studemeyer of 27 yards. Take one more look at the Stampeders opening touchdown. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Eric Rogers, you know, he's he's just doing his thing. He say, I know we got some problems on the O line, but I, I'm just going to run my route, nice little zone route there through the seam, and he just uh, he's a touchdown maker. He just does done nothing but score. In fact, that's now seven touchdowns in seven games in one quarter of the regular season in two years. Two games and 14, two scores. West final, two scores. Four games this year, three scores. Here's Willie on a roll. Sideline pass, and that's caught by Nick Moore, who came into the game. Number one in catches with 19, and number three in receiving yards, and he gets six more. Yeah, this is the Nick Moore that I think everyone expected last year, and he had some injury issues three separate times in the season. Kind of bounced him on and off, but this is the Nick Moore they signed as free agent that they knew that he could be, and that's the number one target for Drew Willett. Led the league with eight second down catches coming into this week. Second down here and four. And Willie in some difficulty, and he is wrapped up and brought down. Leading the charge was Freddie Bishop on the final play of the opening quarter. So it was a quick start by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, but a turnover has turned the momentum of this game around. 16-8 after one quarter at McMahon. Well, the stats reflect that the Bombers have the lead and it probably should be more than 16-8. Well, you take a look at those net yards for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They have 75 yards on one play to Clarence Denmark and 20 yards on the pass interference. That's not reflected in the net yards, but a 20-yard pass interference put them on the one-yard line. So Drew Willie has taken some shots deep in that first quarter against a very good all-star secondary in Calgary. 
Saw a different Winnipeg Blue Bomber team come in here, and yet one mistake can really turn the tide, can it? Yeah, with, without question. The Calgary Stampeders now have got to balance that offensive line. Quinn Smith is now putting on the offensive jersey that he wore on Monday against Toronto. It, we'll see how that changes the, the game plan as far as what they can do offensively if they have to go back to Quinn Smith. Boy, that's a job just getting the jersey on. Ira Lahu to punt it away. And here's Tim Brown, 41-yard punt, and Brown on the return, able to scramble back across the 45-yard line. So the O-line, as they get out into the huddle, will turn to each other and say, hey, I'm, my name is Spencer Wilson. Nice to meet you. Now, wait a minute. I, I see Pierre Laver too back at center. That's a good sign. So this is the way they started. Let's see if it's the way they can finish. Good field position start at the 47. Big to corner, Shannon. Nice slant here to Fuller, who has a first down and rumps into Bomber territory down to the 44. 20 for Jeff Fuller. He's, he's the under route. A quick slant here as the Bombers drop off, take away the deep ball, and Bo Levi Mitchell is just patient with the throw and lets his receiver do the rest. And let's see if Pierre Labertou, how he did in his first snap back. Remember, he had the elbow injury, injury gets a push, hangs on, helping on the push. Looks like he's okay. On Monday, Calgary had 22 points in the second quarter. Looked like a broken play, maybe not. And... All the way down inside the 25-yard line. That's the newcomer, Lamar Durant, in his first Canadian Football League game. He was great in the preseason with five catches for 85 yards. Yeah, against Saskatchewan in the preseason. And, hey, this is a pretty good play to get things started in his CFL career out of SFU. BC kid that somehow dropped to 18 well and three. surprised a lot of people in the draft yeah three receivers went before him and calgary said thank you very much first down back in the hands of cornish and he's inside the 20. lamar durant getting a chance because of a, a broken leg to simon charbonneau campo in that game on monday three fractures for the Stampeder offense in one game. John Huffnagel said that even though John Cornish hasn't broken that big run yet, he played maybe his best game on Monday against Toronto. Got five of the last carry, second and five. Quick hitter, and it's incomplete. Looked like it was going to be intercepted as Devon Washington was on the scene and read Bo Levi Mitchell's mail. You know, we're seeing more zone defense because of the rule changes and what what will happen and what you'll see as the season goes on is offenses will make those plays where they get the slant to Jeff Fuller, Lamar Durant on that quick hitch. And then as the offense starts to think they have confidence because everyone's facing the line of scrimmage defensively, the defense can turn around and make a big play. And Devon Washington, all he had to do was catch that one, and he had himself his first big play. Here's Rennie Paredes from 26 yards out. And he missed it. He has missed practice this week with a, a sore leg. Missed one against the, missed a convert against the Argos and missed an easy one here. The Stamps settle for one. And now trail by seven as Drew Willie gets set to go back to work at the controls of the Bomber offense. And those are the numbers in his two complete games knocked out early in the second game of the season against Hamilton. The only game they lost this year, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and Willie wasn't available for half of that game. They've now had 30 series with Drew Willie at the controls and only five two and outs. Pretty consistent offensive production. Handed off to Cameron Marshall off the left side and nothing doing. There's Quinn Smith 
And one of the reasons for the success, head coach Mike O'Shea says, is Willie's preparation. He's not going to come to practice the next morning without having watched all the practice film from the day before, probably more than once. He's going to have done his uh, pre-practice prep, you know, for the for the different types of days we have. Um, he's going to work on his own ideas and present them to uh, Marcel. I mean, he just seems to love his job and takes it very seriously. Seems to have fun doing it. Wanted to go deep to Nick Moore there, overthrows the intended target under pressure. And that's the first incompletion for Willie officially, as he's now three for four. Yeah, Michael Shea said this week that when you've got your best player and your franchise player is also the hardest working guy in the locker room, you've got a chance to win. And that's what Drew Willie is. So the second punt for Iralahu with pressure and it's blocked. Ball loose and picked up for a Calgary Stampeder touchdown. Adam Tebow's got the football. Winnipeg got one last week and Calgary gets one against the Bombers here. Jeff Heck coming off the edge, times it up nicely. He's going to get the block. Down blocking up front. And he is clean off the edge. Maybe the best special teams player, the Calgary Stampeders lineup, gets the touchdown. And Adam Tebow. Great play by Heck, the fifth year man out of St. Mary's. And Tebow was lauded last Monday by his head coach for an out of this world performance on the teams. And the teams just got the Stampeders even while pending a, an extra point here. Paredes trying to put it through to tie it, and he's got it. Just tucked it in. The Bombers thought he yeah. missed that. So they may have to review that. But for now, it's a tie game at 16, thanks to the heck putt block and scoop and score from Tebow. Look at the block, and, and I stand corrected. It's Adam Berger, 21, not Jeff Heck, 27, off the edge. And his launch point and where he goes to block it is absolutely perfect. Don't go for the punter. You go for where the punter's foot is going to end up, and he lines it up nicely. Tebow takes it in off the bounce. But watch the aiming point here for Berger at SFU right off the foot of Hiralahu. Former high school football player of the year in BC, a quarterback back then, and a big play here on the teams. And just like that, the Stamps get back on even terms. Man center. And the convert is no good. There is no single point on the play. Well, they reviewed it, Ben. Let's take another look at John Huffnagel. A couple of the bombers. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, a couple of the bombers signaled that that was missed, and they review all scoring plays, so they took another look at it, and that goes right over the top and is just outside that upright. So he missed one against Toronto, and here again, it's still a one-point lead, but that may get the point back as yep. Studemeyer's kicking that around in the back of the end zone. And tied at 16, and there looks like a little rust on the star returner who looked so good on his first touch, but has struggled since then. Well, he heard it from his head coach when he fumbled the ball and tried to do a little too much on one return, and... Maybe he's trying to fight a little self-doubt right now and get some confidence back. And I'm sure Michael O'Shea is saying, hey, don't worry about it. Just know where you are in the field. 
Give them lots of room. They've got a little bit of a breeze behind them. Bombers start at the 35 after the kickoff point. Here comes Josh Bell, safety blitz. Get picked up, and Willie has time. Nice snag. Good catch by Denmark, and a first down out at the Calgary bench in the 46-yard line. All Canadian last year in Clarence Denmark. This is a great catch because he he, he knows there, there could be a corner hanging out there waiting to just put his helmet right between the eight and the nine, but he doesn't worry about that. He just stretches out and brings it in. Number two in receiving last year, 65 catches, 1,080 yards, three for 88. On the afternoon, first down, Cotton left side and will be dropped. Well, it did scramble back to the line of scrimmage when it looked like he was going to lose yardage. Jawan Simpson, the tackle. Simpson back in the lineup Monday brought back the edge that seemed to be missing in Montreal in yeah. his absence. Yeah, he, he knows how to, to push people and, and who to talk to, who to kick in the butt if he has to. And when their back's against the wall, he'll make a play. He is their leader in the middle, without question. And was at Alabama, too. Second and ten. Willie. That pass incomplete intended for Denmark who didn't look like he was expecting it. Yeah well he made an adjustment. He, he was on and out right along the sideline there and then he turned it up just as Willie had let go of the football. Willie threw the out Denmark ran the out and up. Since the Studemeyer fumbled just one first down for Winnipeg on offense. No rush this time on Hirolahu. Brown back at his 16. They're going to call no yards. Tim Brown getting outside and is hauled down. That was going to save a big return as Garrett Wagner brought down Brown. 15 yard no yards will be the call. No yards against Winnipeg. In fact, a holding call against Calgary and the Stampeders have a long field starting at their eight but it's been another explosive second quarter for the Calgary Stampeders getting a contribution from the special teams and special teams had a few too many penalties last week so they've corrected some of that although this holding puts Paul Levi Mitchell back in a hole see Gary Williams the left tackle six years in the NFL 41 games played and corner Sean the spin up to the 15 yard line. Oh, he's got lots of pro experience. I mean, he's National Football League and he's been with Calgary since training camp at the University of Kentucky. Second team all SEC in 07 and 08 and played with the Panthers. And so he has to just make the adjustment with the yard off the ball. But he is a big man. I mean, you stand on his beautiful day in the foothills in Calgary. Stand anywhere around him, you he blocks the sun. <laughs> John Huffnagel's got this next man up concept down, doesn't he? Second and four, and Cordes crashes across the right side and has the first down. Yeah, I don't think there's there's any question that that that's been one of the keys to John Huffnagel's success and poised to win his 50th game. John Huffnagel has a plan. And then he has a plan B, and then he has a plan C. And right now, when it comes to his O line, he's right down there at plan C. But I don't think there'll be any issue with Gary Williams at left tackle. Now, he hasn't played left tackle, he's played right tackle, right guard. So that's an adjustment. Cote is a tight end here on first down. Mitchell's got some time throwing the out and incomplete intended for Fuller. Well, John Huffnagel wasn't worried about his new left tackle. 
He's a veteran player. He has a lot of uh, snaps under his belt in professional football. He's been here uh, you know, all, all during training camp. And so uh, he's excited about this opportunity, and uh, everyone has full confidence that he'll be able to go in and execute his assignments. The way things change on that Calgary offensive line, he he could be a veteran in a hurry. Second and ten, Mitchell stands in, and he'll get wrapped up. Khalil Bass from his linebacker position, part of the mob that surrounded Bo Levi Mitchell. Yeah, I talked to defense coordinator Richie Hall before the game about Khalil Bass. Said he can do a little bit of everything. He said he's sort of like a Dexter McCoyle and can be that kind of player in coverage, although maybe not as good as Dexter McCoyle in Edmonton at that spot. But then he's got the sort of Adam Big Hill run stopping ability. He said, again, he's not Adam Big Hill, but he can do both. And that's what we like about him that versatility can open up the defensive playbook when he can play coverage, maybe even drop to the middle, but it's a good run stopper, and you saw him going a blitz on that last play. Jamal Westerman also there from his goal line. Maver sends it downfield. 52-yard punt. See what Studemeyer does with this. Cuts it back. Found a crease. There's a better return by Studemeyer inside the 40. A 23-yard return. Stop thinking. Just react. Take another look at Studemeyer the good. Yeah, he just, he stopped thinking about it. He just caught the ball and let his instincts take over, get up field, positive yards, and good field position for Drew Will. Bombers squandered a 16-point lead, but have a first down inside the Calgary 40. And they'll hand it off straight ahead. And Jawan Simpson's waiting for Paris Cotton. Talk about run stoppers. Khalil Bass and, and all the young linebackers would do themselves a favor to watch a little game tapes on that guy in the middle of the Calgary defense. Ron Simpson. Nice play inside by the rookie Derek Wigan as well. Defensive tackle helping out with Simpson. Second and eight. Short drop just dumps it off and the pass incomplete. Intended for Cotton with Deron Mayo bearing down on the released running back. So that bomber offense has well, we started to struggle. Yeah, we mentioned the first quarter. They took some shots deep, were successful. One play to Clarence Denmark, and then a pass interference call got them on the goal line. They haven't done that in the second quarter, but it's because the Calgary defense is providing more pressure. The pocket is collapsing around Drew Willie quicker. He doesn't have time to get it deep. Ira Lahu out of the hold of Brian Brown from 45 yards out, and... He has missed. And Brown's going to bring it out. Game remains tied. Brown to the outside. Little cut back. And he's across the 35-yard line. Well, Tim Brown brought that one out. He was a little shy earlier. There's the return Mark Killam was looking for. 51 yards on the punt return. Still got a lot of game in him, Tim Brown. Just see, just pushes it. Hyralahu just to the right. Clearly missed wide right. And that set up to go four or five yards straight up the field and then break to his left. Gave him some angles. But look at those feet. That's fast twitch for you. So the stamp started at their 44. Fly sweep to McDaniel. The play is halted. Somebody must have flinched on that offensive line. Or was play whistled in?
So no play. We're told they may have been looking at that field goal just to confirm the miss. Dave Dickinson, a little upset, thought he had something on that fly sweep to McDaniel. They're still not ready to go. They haven't reset the clock. The 22nd clock at zero. Now it's been reset, and now we're ready. Stamp offense champing at the bit. Rodgers on the waggle to the far side. Looks like Mitchell was looking that way, and the pass skipped short of the intended target, number 80. Well, Dave Dickinson was upset. Sometimes it's best to just say nothing. So we'll just continue on in second and long here for the Calgary Stampeders, but manage the game and get things going here. The whole idea is to be up-tempo. It's fast, exciting Canadian Football League game, and it's time to start doing it. Second and ten. Three-man bomber front, four receivers wide side. Mitchell looks that way, has a completion. And Joe West brought down at the 50. He'll be short of the first down. Just six on the play. Coming off the sideline there, John Cornish was kind of waving his hands and looks like he's getting a little frustrated walking to the bench. Like he would like to see the ball a little more. Just four touches. We've hit the three-minute warning here. First half at McMahon, and the game is tied at 16. For Calgary. And Studemeyer back for the Bombers at his 15. Rodgers can't bring him down, but the second wave does. And a flag comes down. Carl McCartney, the special team tackle. And a penalty on the play. going to go against the Bombers. Illegal block, Winnipeg, number 27. Half the distance to goal, first down, Winnipeg. Zeke Sherman, who had a special teams touchdown last week on the punt block recovery against Montreal. Well, there's been a lot of talk about the penalties. Both of these coaches told their teams, guys, you got to play within the rules. Don't don't put it on the official. Just play within the rules. And you could see Michael O'Shea talking to Teague Sherman there saying, hey, if you see his back, don't hit it. Starting at the six. The inside handoff and Paris Cotton has about five. Jeff Tedford told us in Saskatchewan, head coach of the BC Lions, about the penalties that it's about decision making. It really is. You, you have a chance, even though it's a fast game, these guys have trained all their lives at this speed. And you make the right decision. Don't give them that. It's not about what you can get away with. It's about making the right decision and not hurting your team. Some guys don't get any penalties. Remember Ian Wild, didn't he go over a year without a penalty? That was two years. Here's Willie throwing, and he's got Nick Moore. It's a first down. That's a valuable first down for the Bombers to give them a little breathing room and keep the ball away from Calgary here in the late stages of the first half. It sure is. There's two real important areas of the football field. One's when you're backed in your own end and get positive yards and get out of trouble in field position. And the other is, of course, in the green zone, the red zone, whatever you want to call it, when you're inside the 20 going in. Bombers worked on that red zone offense a ton this week. Only five of eight and all the completions to Denmark or Moore so far. And he'll keep that going as Clarence Denmark has his fourth catch. Another first down out beyond the 30. It's one of my favorite plays. It's, it's an intermediate route, but it's just a nice curl where Denmark sees the hole and he sits down and, and Willie has to throw it on time or the zone defenders for Calgary can break on this. There's one on the inside out, one on the outside in. That's how quick it happens. Denmark over 100. And there's Nick Moore with another catch. Bombers have scored a point in every quarter so far this season. 
Don't have one yet though in the second quarter of this game. So a string of points in seven in 13 straight quarters on the line here. And another completion and another first down. So the Bombers have put three first downs together here with just over a minute to go in the first half. And they're, they're forcing Drew Willie, the Calgary defense, they're forcing him to be patient with this. And just chip away at it. Ten for more, another first down. Short drop, and now he'll swing it out, and there's Paris Cotton. First reception for the running back, and he's pushed out at the bomber bench right in front of the offense coordinator, Marcel Belfay. And Marcel Belfay is seeing that the, the Calgary Stampeders are giving that underneath stuff a little bit of room. So, so he'll take that, whether it be Paris Cotton or those quick hitches to Nick Moore, Clarence Denmark, and Drew Willie's being patient. Now that pulled the secondary for Calgary closer to the receivers. And that's when you try and double move them. Five for five on the drive, seventh play. Upcoming, and it's a quarterback draw. Ran into traffic, and Jeff Heck there to close down and keep him short of the first. That's the importance of, in your pass rush, the interior two defensive linemen collapsing the pocket. We always talk about the Charleston Hughes of the league on the edge because they're those dynamic pass rushes that usually total up the sacks. But when you get a good push and the pocket gets collapsed, you can't run quarterback draw. You take away throwing lanes. Rich Stubler got good push from his interior guys there. Boy, Junior Turner starting to make a name for himself at defensive tackle. Now in his fifth year, but really finally consolidating himself as a starter. So third down and Mike O'Shea not in a gambling mood here as he takes the clock down to about a half minute. Ira who boots it away. Jim Brown on the run. That one will not be fielded. It goes out, and let's see where they're going to mark it. Out at the 16. Well, CFL action continues next Friday. Wendy's Friday Night Football double header first. Stampeders and Red Blacks, they kick off 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, and then it's the Argonauts and the Lions who have won two straight, kicking off 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, both live on TSN. Good looking receiving core in Toronto all of a sudden. Kevin Elliott, one of them. Both those teams, two and one. One of these two teams going to be three and one when the day is over as they run out the clock here in the opening half. Mitchell let the clock drain and this should do it. Early advantage for Winnipeg. Calgary responds. And we're through 30 minutes. And the game is tied at 16 apiece. Should be an interesting second half at McMahon. Right now, halftime. And here's Rod Smith. Number, a little number, and a little number for the Stampeders. All these numbers over here are significantly bigger for the Bombers. But the bottom line is this number right here. 14 points off of turnovers. Winnipeg statistically is playing a better game, but we're tied. Yeah, one of those touchdowns for Calgary scored by Eric Rogers, standing by now with Jermaine Franklin. Eric, can you talk about what goes on through the bench's mind or your mind when you see offensive linemen go down? Thankfully, a couple who came back. But what goes through the offense's mind? Uh, after last week, it's like, not again, really, you know. But, uh, you know, guys are stepping in, we're making plays, guys are coming back, being tough, and we, we like that. How key was it for this team to keep the morale up? And obviously, you responded uh, coming back from 16 points down to tie. Yeah, special teams made two big plays, you know, a touchdown and gave us the ball in a short field. And it was an easy touchdown after that. Got back in the game. Now it's 0 0 going to half. And we, we, we expect to win this game. Appreciate your time. No problem. Appreciate you too. Eric Rogers, who caught his touchdown pass from Bo Levi Mitchell inside that Stamps dressing room. Drew Willie 
And the Bombers off to a quick start at 16-0. Tie game with the second half kickoff coming up. As we get set for the second half in Calgary, but first, down to the sidelines, Jermaine Franklin's with Clarence Denmark. Clarence, over 100 yards receiving in that first half for you, as well as a, as well as a touchdown. Can you take us through that scoring play? Uh, got got me over the top on the post. You know, Drew threw a good ball and the rest is history. As for the offense, you guys have nearly double the yardage of the Stamps. Do you just have to keep on doing what you're doing, or are there certain adjustments that need to be made in the second half? I mean, just keep doing the same thing. You know, going out there, trying not to make mistakes that we made, and keep the ball moving. Appreciate your time, Clint. All right, thank you. <laughs> One 100-yard game for Clarence Denmark last year, and he has his first of 2015, 103 yards in that first half. Yeah, last year, first 1,000-yard season, 65 catches for him and had that big play over the middle for 75 yards in the first quarter. Calgary secondary tightened down when it came to the deep ball in the second quarter and it forced Drew Willie to dump it underneath and try and be patient. A successful strategy for Rich Stubler. See what adjustments these teams make now. Surprisingly, the Stamps coming into this game, ninth in scoring and eighth in yards, and they were held to under 100 net yards in the opening half. Studemeyer to get things going here in the second half. Crashing over the 30 to the 33, 25 yard return to set up the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on offense, and Clarence Denmark, the most dangerous weapon. There's a 75 yarder, got things going for Winnipeg. They scored first. Denmark in behind Josh Bell. But yeah, he had a big first half, 100 yards. You know, he was so close, 2013 at 900. Back to 800 yard season as well. Was knocking on the door and walked through it last year. Joe Burnett getting on the field a little late on defense for Calgary. Well, he has some time. He's got Darvin Adams, first catch of the game for Adams. A first down up at the 45. Number four, the fourth receiver that Willie has utilized here today. Went through the read progressions nicely here, Drew Willie. He's going to take the snap in the shotgun, takes a look straight down the middle, tries to hold Jawan Simpson by looking right at him so he won't open up and get over there, and then puts it right on Darvin Adams. 12 for Adams, the tackle for... Jamar Wall, first down Bombers. Paris Cotton trying to get outside of Freddie Bishop. And Jawan Simpson's there to smother him. Limit the gain to three. Juan Simpson flows nicely, just scraping. And, and, and you know that D-line again, those interior two guys and Junior Turner up front, not sure if Quinn Smith was in there not play because he's playing both sides of the ball these days, but those guys up front allow the linebackers to scrape to running plays. Second and seven, empty backfield, quick hitter, and nearly picked off. Yeah, Darvin Adams was over there, and, and it looked like he should have had a blitz adjustment. Buddy Jackson doing push-ups. Still looking for his first CFL interception. And Suits, he didn't have one in college either. So I'm guessing he's done a few push-ups. <laughs> yeah, there is Darvin Adams there. He's just going to run a straight go route. And it looked like Drew Willie thought he might be adjusting to that pressure coming from Calgary, and he didn't. He just can't kind of run right through it. Ira La, who boots it away. Tim Brown settles under the 50-yard punt. And he's brought down around the 25 by Derek Jones. So the first offensive possession for Calgary in the second half there. Touchdown scored by Eric Rogers, who added a two-point cover. Let's see if Calgary can get some traction on offense. They start with John Cornish, and he'll plunge straight ahead for about six yards. 
quiet first half for number nine. Just four touches for 24 yards in the first half. That's his fifth touch of the game. As he tries to climb up the all-time rushing list, or excuse me, the rushing list this season, and the all-time rushing list. Last year, after three games, 304 yards, 185 coming into this game for Corners, now up to 30. Who's going to get a screen? In week four, Mitchell over the middle, and he's got Marquay McDaniel who fumbles, and the Bombers get on it. Khalil Bass ends up with a football. Leggett tried to scoop it up and nearly left it on the carpet for Calgary to get it back, but Khalil on Bass the field has a, a completed pass followed by a fumble recovered by Winnipeg. First down, Winnipeg. Has the fumble recovery. Like the play was so well executed from Bo Levi Mitchell on that little play action, but uh, big play on the strip from DeMond Washington. Now the question is, did he have possession? Well, I don't think there's any question. He took about two or three yep. steps, and, and DeMond Washington from behind knocked it out. Had possession. Looked like he was trying to tuck it onto the hip, and that's when oh, it was tucked. Washington. You don't necessarily have to put it under your arm to have possession either. You can be running it with it, the football in your hands. He took three or four steps, went about two or three yards. Take a look in regular speed. This gets you a better perspective, but I, I don't think there's any question that ball was stripped from behind. Caught and fumbled. So it is a first down for the Bombers. Baby girl, I love y'all, man. DeMond Washington had a shot at an interception in the first half. Makes a big play there. Force fumble, cause a turnover. Calgary minus seven in the turnover ratio early in the year. That's very uncharacteristic. They swing it out to Cotton. The trouble getting the handle, but now he's got it in positive yards. Brought down by that mobile defensive tackle out of Bishop's junior turner. Yeah, Coach Lapo talked about that at halftime, that, you know, good teams find a way. I mean, the Calgary Stampeders on Monday, when they lost two tackles, they won on defense, and Bo Levi Mitchell made some plays late in the fourth quarter, and John Huffnagel will tell you there are no excuses that you've got to find different ways to win. Championship teams do that. Stamps have 14 points off turnovers, one for the Bombers so far. Oh, another one. And another fumble. And does Calgary get it back? Yes, they do. Well, they trade turnovers here in the opening four minutes of the third quarter. Looked like the exchange was good between Drew Willey and Paris Cotton. Charleston Hughes there. He's playing opposite his buddy Stanley Bryant. Yeah, he's the guy who gets his hand in there. Stanley Bryant on the opposite side, and he just crashes down, gets his arm in there, and strips it. And, and he recovered. Comes up with it. the recovery. Yep. Heck of a play by the two star defensive end. Two stats for Charleston Hughes. Force fumble, fumble recovery. <laughs> So back to Calgary football. At the 37 with Tim Brown in, and that ball batted down. Greg Peach with the knockdown. Greg Peach coming off the edge. He's in a two-point stance. On that right side is Spencer Wilson. That's not his responsibility. He's going down and crashing down on Harlan. So one step, good timing on the jump from Greg Peach, and he bats it out of the air. So second and 10. Corners back in. And Mitchell to Fuller, and that sails incomplete. Johnny Adams, who's had a terrific start on the corner for the Bombers in coverage. Fifth to an out for the 
Calgary Stampeders in offense. Of course, Adams with the pick six last week against Rakeem Cato and the Alouettes. First, first down, Tim Brown was in the backfield, and John Corners took a long time to get to the sideline there. He was out there for second down. He's starting to talk to the coaches a little bit, maybe showing some frustration. Favorite kick, and that one not his best. Studemeyer uh -oh. charges and runs into a teammate, Bruce Johnson. And Studemeyer got their signals crossed, but they do draw the no yards penalty after just a 35 yard punt by Maver. Uh, whoops. Good hit, though. Still locked in a 16 all tie with first place at stake in the Western Division. Albeit early. Never too early to be in first place, is it? <laughs> it's never wrong. Double tight end formation. Willie stands in, long out. And Moore has another catch, a short gain in front of Jamar Wall. Yeah, another catch, but but not a lot in the first half. I had four catches, 30 yards. His longest was a 10-yarder. This is a two-yarder by the time it's all said and done. Haven't heard from Rory Kohler yet today. Drew Willie gets another second in that pocket. He can start pushing the ball a little deeper. Second and eight. Cotton stays in, now releases. The out is complete. And Duran Mayo denies the first down. The, another catch for Moore. But a punt situation after catches of two and five for Moore on that. Two and out. But the good sign for Drew Willie is that he's, and for Bomber fans, that he's locked in again looking at Nick Moore and trying to get him the football a little bit more. Third two and out of the game for the Bombers. Tim Brown lets that bounce over his head. He hoped it would go into the end zone, but a great bounce for Lear, Liram Hiralahu. 56 yards into the corner, and it's out at the three. Big time putt by Hiralahu. And a field position advantage for the Bombers here. Backs overall in the CFL are down. Right, game for John Cornish so far. Long field. Starting at the three, into the hands of Cornish off the left side. And a little breathing room up over the 10 to the 12. Nine yard pickup, which is his best of the night. Gets a pulling lineman in front of him and is able to get the edge because of it. Just five touches before that run. All running plays, haven't used him in the passing game yet. 70 yards against Hamilton, 59 in week two, 56 on Monday against the Argos. Slow start, but still on pace for 1,000 yards. Second and one. And it's corners for the first down and more. Pounds it across the 20. And maybe they'll ride number nine. Yeah, well, this you saw Dave Dickinson and that shot of him on the sideline, this just may become the Cornish drive. He gets him out of the hole, good run on first down off the edge, and then watch the power at the end of this run. Pretty upright, too, to be that strong, to knock over that defender, didn't get the number. Westerman finally brings him down. In his first 1,000-yard season, he had only 199 yards after five games. So he has started slow in the past. He's ripping it up now. John Cornish up near the Calgary 50-yard line, and that's got the crowd into it. 
three consecutive carries and he'll come to the sidelines. Well, when you when you get those down blocks from the right side of the old line, then Cornish can play off of that. It influences the the defense to go with the blocks and he just takes it on his own bounces outside. Nice cut back into the middle. Johnny Adams drags him down. That's his best run of the year. Twenty five yards and now with a, a season high. 74 yards for Cornish into the game Matt Walter stay on the ground and Walter crashes up around midfield Well, Cornish just taking a breather there after three consecutive plays so what he's done so far again coming into this game tonight was on pace for a thousand yard season and again 44 on this drive. He remains on the bench. Walter got seven. Rob Cote checks back in. Second and three, Calgary. And out of the backfield, Walter's got the catch. And pushed out by Chris Randall, but it's another first down on Matt Walter's first reception of 2015 and a 12-yard gain. Good assist from Jeff Fuller here. He's going to just play this subtly so that he doesn't get the call right here as he comes across it's it, he looks like he wants to try and pick up a, a pick but he doesn't do it he just kind of gets in the way just takes his time is is just kind of weeding his way to let Matt Walter out in behind him. five first downs in the first half they have amassed four so far on this drive and now it's Tim Brown third running back in the drive and he brings it to the 40 and has four Cornish back in the game and, and was used as a bit of a decoy. Pulled a one defender, Khalil Bass, with him. But they put Cornish in there now on, on second and medium. Do you think all the changes on the offensive line discourage them from I, using I, Cornish? I, I wouldn't think so. I think it simplifies things to allow your old line just to fire off and hit opposite jersey, opposite color. See if they can keep the drive going. Westerman got a jump. Boy, did he ever. And gets to the quarterback. A flag does come down late. Looked like he was offside, but that flag came down as Westerman had enveloped Bo Levi Mitchell. Went really late. I Offside, Winnipeg number 55. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. I didn't think there was any question, but didn't see a flag, and right. I thought, did he did he get off his stance that quickly? Because you're gonna you're gonna see a, a get off here, but clearly in the neutral zone. So second and one and lots of possibilities in Dave Dickinson's playbook. Drew T out of shotgun formation hands it off and Cornish bounce off first oh, contact. There he, he goes. There he is. Well there's the guy that's left the league in rushing for the last three years. It was almost like on one play you saw the transition and he's had slow starts before because here's the transition on one play. He runs right in the back of his old lineman. There's, there's the corners that they got off to the slow start and then he went okay enough of that bounces outside shows his lateral movement watch the athleticism to jump over that first tackler and away he goes with some speed. So on this drive alone his first two 20 yard plus carries 25 and 21 and all of a sudden he's knocking on the door of another 100 yard game. Flag comes down the slant to Anthony Parker touchdown. Looks like it may come back. Offside Calgary number 80 five yard penalty repeat first down. Eric Rogers number given as the culprit. Take a look at Eric Rogers. Yep. <laughs> Not much doubt. Not much doubt. Three, four yards. After 12 games, 96 illegal procedure and offside calls in the CFL. It has nothing to do with rule changes. Got to clean that up. Yep. Takes a touchdown away from Parker, who was 
as Dave Dickinson said, a spark plug on Monday against the Argos. Long out, over in the hands of Rodgers, trying to make amends, stretching for the goal line, and didn't get there. And that was a dangerous stretch, but he does get 17, and it's first and goal. I was going to say, I think he didn't get there, but he did get to first down marker, and that'll give Calgary a new set of downs inside the five. Went right to him, and, and the key on this play is the timing for Bull Levi Mitchell to get it to him quickly enough so he can turn around and make his first move on Matt Buckner. He's a smooth route runner. The reach comes up a yard short. Drew Tate comes in a yard away. First and goal, Calgary. And Tate with a play. Over the top, it's a Calgary touchdown. One drive, 107 yards, and Tate caps it. Oh, we'll call that the Cornish drive. Got him out of the hole with three consecutive running plays. Got him into the green zone with a big run. Throw to Eric Rogers, and then Drew Tate finishes it. Tate has had some problems with the one yard short yardage game so far this season. But John Cornish gets it finally into high gear and he had 71 yards of rushing so far in this third quarter. So Paredes hits this extra point. First time today, Calgary's got the lead. John Cornish at his best, had a run of 25, this for 21, and it sets up a touchdown march for the Stamps. One hundred seven yards in the drive, six minutes, 28 seconds. Off the clock. Cornish now has nine for 95 yards. But a big drive and a big third quarter for number nine. Looks like he's back. So at least working his way back. 65 of the 107, courtesy of number nine. So the running back goes to the bike and continues to kind of keep his legs going to work out. The big guys are just going to take a little break. And I, and I don't blame them. Studemeyer from his 11. Angled out at the 29. Let's check in with Jermaine Franklin and a familiar face here at McMahon. That's right, Chris, a very familiar face. A Stampeder legend, 11 years in the red and white. Nick Lewis right now with us. Nick, what brings you back to Calgary and what's it like for you sitting in the stands watching this game? It's a little different, you know, but uh, I wanted to come back, get the atmosphere in before we play here on the first and get the emotions out today. Now with the Montreal Alouettes, obviously, you're, you already have 15 catches. You're on pace to obliterate your last two seasons uh, in catches. Is this sort of a resurgence for you? Yeah, I felt like I was doing well uh, before I got hurt, and the injury kind of took me down a little bit, but I'm feeling good again, so I feel, feel healthy and just looking forward to another good year. And if I could get a quick comment from you on the resiliency of this Stampeder club, obviously um, the offensive linemen that have gone down in the first few weeks, uh, what can you say about them? Same thing I always said about them. They plug and play. You know, Huff's going to make sure they're prepared to win no matter who plays the game, and uh, they're a well-coached team, and, you know, that's why they've won the way they've won over the years. Appreciate your time, Nick, and all the best. Thank you. First, Nick with a touchdown against his old team and a Alouette win over Calgary. Second down play here, and it's a catch for Nick Moore and a first down. 
conversion for the Bombers trying to answer a touchdown march of Calgary that's put them ahead for the first time in the game. I don't know. I know those Montreal receivers have got to be happy with uh, Rakeem Cato and what he's doing in Montreal. Let's see big Nick Lewis. I know he has some tailgaters back here at McMahon Stadium that he visits with Nick Lewis Nation. Yeah. They've taken care of us son yes. <laughs> and it's appreciated the odd burger or two. There's pressure on Willie trying to get outside flag comes down passes thrown away. And it's a holding call against Winnipeg. Well this play doesn't have a chance. Early on holding. Winnipeg number 69 10 yard penalty repeat first down that's the rookie right guard Chung. Well and, and the play action goes the wrong way so the timing's off but there's the holding you get your right guard Suk Chung number 69 on an inside move grabs the shoulder pads of Derek Wigan. <laughs> Bombers have surrendered seven sacks so far this season that's on pace for a dramatic improvement over 71 last year Willie gets it to Darvin Adams who gets away breaks free, and he's going to win a foot race to the end zone Darvin Adams for a 79 yard touchdown there's the answer yeah and it starts with great protection you just had mentioned it Chris and how Willie is getting that better protection up front a little stunt from Calgary's defensive line picked up nicely so he has the throwing lane to get it out of there Chris Greaves and Stanley Bryant on the left side take care of the stunt so that there's a throwing lane for Drew Willie he puts it on Adams on time and allows Adams to do the rest. So a 75 yarder in the first quarter to Denmark and the first points since just over the nine minute mark of the opening quarter for Winnipeg and now a convert away from tying it. Hyrule Law who has missed it. So it continues to be a problem and because of it it continues to be a Calgary lead 23 22 on the final play of the third quarter Darvin Adams inside beats Buddy Jackson and it's a 79 yard touchdown play for the Bombers. See a 79 yard play the other way for a touchdown. That's how quickly you can come back. And, and for the Bombers, they've had two big plays 75 yarder and a 79 yarder. That takes up most of their offense. So they're that back to that deep ball that worked in the first quarter. Drew really got time to throw. Nice throw to Darvin Adams. Big picture, the Bombers have squandered some opportunities here, including a 16 0 lead, but. They still look like an improved football team. Well, well no yeah. question. And their offensive line improved. We saw that with the time that Drew Willie is getting. Plus, another big picture point, Chris, for me would be that the extra points. Yes. And that rule change making a difference. Coach Mike O'Shea said, I believe in Hyrule Lahu, despite coming into the game four for seven now, six of ten in converts and you wonder if that's going to start influencing the decision yeah. to go for two. Round from just inside the five. And a scamper outside and he's contained at the 25 yard line. Just Dar Briggs on the tackle. Darvin Adams loves this play and his touchdown because he gets the single. One, two, three, four, five receivers to the wide side of the field. And just down at the bottom, Darvin Adams on the one on one. So he gets a chance on Buddy Jackson to run a route. And now he's just going to do his route running, watch his little outside stem, nice little jab step, catches a post on time. The ball placement perfect from. Drew Willie and then he gets a block downfield just enough. 
And away he goes. NCAA national champion at Auburn. He was a favorite target of Cam Newton. And a little swing pass here. McDaniel avoided first contact and gets some positive yards to the 30. A gain of four when it looked like he might lose yardage. We've done a couple of Calgary Stampeder games now this season and and Dave Dickinson and his play calling the pattern for me I feel like would be John Cornish screen time right about now. Hey coach. Second and six. Corner stayed in the block. And McDaniel, does he make the catch? No. Incomplete as Matt Buckner and Chris Randall help the officials out on the call. Cornish doesn't get out on the screen here because he has got to block. He's got a blocking assignment on the blitz. He's got to take step up, and he does a nice job, takes care of it. In fact, John Huffton made a point this week of talking about how well Cornish is blocking, and they're at the other end. McDaniel just can't hang on as he lays out for this one. And he uses the ground to help him corral it. So the 6 2 and out of the game. Another momentum shift. Winnipeg down by one, but getting set to take the football here. And it's Studemeyer on the 39 yard punt trying to get to the outside. And he's contained and hit hard there as Charlie Power closes down on him. But good field position for Drew Willey, who's let it fly to Denmark and then Adams for a couple touchdown passes here today at McMahon. In Calgary on a beautiful Saturday evening. Bombers down by one after the missed convert, but they start here, the 47. Good field position, hit screen, Clarence Denmark, and it's busted up by Jamar Wall. Evades the blocks and drops Denmark for a loss. Well, in order to be successful on some deep throws, you have to run these kind of plays to keep defensive backs honest. And draw, uh, Jamar Wall comes up, makes a nice play. All CFL last year, and all CFL PA, so his peers. The receivers said Jamar Wall was an all-star. Number 28 on the CFL top 50 list. Second and 12. Willie to the far side. Catch is made and bounced out oh. by Fred Bennett. Done a pretty good collision there. Very good collision. Bennett shaking up a little bit on that collision. There's the push to the flat. Watch the collision at the end of the play. Addison Richardson Richards has the catch. Good Bob. for draft choice. Good on Bennett too to keep his head out of that hit. But shaking up there looks like he might have got a shoulder. Hopefully just a burner. So Bennett gets up. And they'll have to make adjustments in that Calgary secondary. Joe Bennett's already checked in. Good run by Richards. Turn the corner, lower his shoulder, and a little limp there from Bennett. Maybe it's not the shoulder. First catch for one of the Canadian receivers, the rookie out of Regina. It was one of the interesting parts of the, of the draft. Saskatchewan drafting a guy from Winnipeg and yeah the Bombers answering with a selection from Saskatchewan at the same position. Big first down provided by Addison Richards and it's a first down in Calgary territory. Big the fly sweep. Willie in some trouble avoids the rush but the flag is coming as he throws it away. Cameron Marshall ended up in a pile there with Brandon Smith.
And if there's a good penalty, this might be one of them from Cameron Holding Marshall. Winnipeg, number 32. Ten-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Bomber fans are saying, what are you talking about? That's a holding, put him back. But let me just show you, the blitz coming off the edge here from, from Brandon Smith, and, and he's coming. Marshall's going to pick him up number 32, and if he doesn't grab him here and, and hold him, that's a big hit on Drew Willie. Pushes the Bombers back onto their own side of midfield. First and 20. They empty it out. Six receivers. Here comes the pressure. And Willie taken down. Freddie Bishop gets home and has his second sack. You know, Freddie, Freddie Bishop gets free because Deron Mayo lines up in the line and now is counted. And Freddie Bishop off the edge isn't counted in the pass rush. So Mayo shows up in there. He's going, they've got to take the closest and the inside players. He just goes to engage. He's not really even blitzing. Mayo just shows, hits the guard to take up a block to leave the edge free. Freddie Bishop gets there. Okay, OC, what do you got on second and 27? Had this screenplay and punt. Screenplay. And Marshall brought down, will get a punt. Not going very far. No, you don't want to start to spiral downhill here. You get a couple of negative plays. Just try and get what you can, get a little more field position here and punt it away and try and get your defense out there. Sometimes but that's, that's a big defensive series because it looked yeah. like the Bombers were... Well, were, they started in good field position. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Who kicking it away? Tim Brown awaits for the back pedal at the 18, a 52-yard punt, and a flag will negate this return. As we approach the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter, John Cornish and the Calgary offense back onto the field, clinging to a one-point lead in this showdown for first place in the West. Last time Calgary was back to their own end, they went to number nine. John Cornish got him out of trouble. Not only that, he got him to the end zone. So it's Sam Hurl in the linebacking core against nine if they try that same strategy. Hold an illegal block and they start at the nine for number nine. And Sam Hurl hanging on for the ride as John Cornish goes over 100 yards rushing. He scrapes well, and this is how difficult it is to bring down Cornish when he gets a chance to get to the second level. Watch Sam Hurl. Nice scrape, good read. He reacts immediately and is right there to get his head on the right side of the tackle and then just tries to corral him. I saw a little bit of that kind of action at the Calgary Stampede. So nine for number nine and second and one. 105 yards. Drew Tate comes in with the short yardage crew. And the plunge ahead should be enough. But again, John Corner's 30 yards until midway through the third quarter. I asked Richie Hall about stopping Cornish in, in the plan and they did a good job of it in the first half, although Cornish only saw the ball four times. He said it's about gap responsibility. Now one thing that Winnipeg can do defensively here is they could run blitz, basically do a full blitz, seven man pressure even, to eliminate all the gaps. But what that does, if it's blocked up, it puts one-on-ones for guys like Jeff Fuller, Mark Way McDaniel, Eric Rogers, and Bo Levi Mitchell. If he can get it out of there, you can make the big play. That's the gamble you take when you run blitz. Came up a chain link short. Maybe not even that. And so third down. And Tate stays in. This is what Matt Dunnigan calls Neanderthal football. <laughs> oh, not much. not much. 
but a flag down and did that Stoughton Winnipeg line give them a full yard. You know, when a team's struggling in short yardage, often thought that one way to get out of it. Procedure, Calgary on the left guard. Oh. Five yard penalty, repeat, third down. That's a big stop for Winnipeg. Take a look at the movement, early movement. There's a head bob. A little head movement there from, look like the left guard, Shane Bergman. We'll take the penalty, because they got the first down, so they have to take the penalty third down again, and a kick out of his own end zone for Maver. I was gonna say, in short yardage, if you're struggling a little bit, fake one and go over the top. That'll back out the defense up just a little bit, or at least make them hesitate for a second. Wouldn't mind seeing a measurement to see if Tate actually got the first down. They take the penalty. Could have been a turnover on downs. 41-yard kick, and flats are down at both ends of this play. Looks like a 15-yard no yards, and something back near the line of scrimmage. We will sort it out when we come back. Looks like the Bombers should have great field position. Greg Newman for holding for Winnipeg and Eric Rogers the 15 yard no yard so Michael Shea's offense starts on Calgary side of the field here down by one with just over eight and a half minutes to go. Coming into this game the Calgary secondary giving up four plays through the air over 30 yards two in this game tonight. Have they tighten that down. First down, Paris Cotton straight ahead and Cotton to the 44. As four. Freddie. Paris Cotton with 56 yards in the game. So, sorry, Chris. Freddie, Freddie Bishop played that so well. I mean, this is this is that zone read play. Put it in the running back stomach and try and isolate this guy. If he stays high, you give the ball to the running back. If he stays low, Bishop does both. He stays high to force the decision and then slides down and makes the tackle. He's having a day, four tackles, two sacks. Second and six. Looking for a first down or at least field goal range. Moore nope. is not going to get the first down. Forward progress appeared to be the 42, so Mike O'Shea will send out the field goal unit to try a 49-yarder to take the lead. Nick Moore has been used a lot in this intermediate to short stuff. And I wonder if, if in the playbook that they've got a double move for him. I know fans at home are thinking that's that's a tough way to try and get get six when you when you curl four yards out. So from 49 out for the lead, and Ira Lahu has put it through. It'll make the coach forget the convert for a couple of minutes. Well, it, it maybe makes the coach scratch his head a little bit too. Wait a minute, he can make that one look like it's no problem and easy, and yet the converts have been a bit of an issue and I and I wonder I wonder if if Michael O'Shea then if the Bombers score will just ignore whatever the situation on the scoreboard is and just say we have as good a chance to go for two in that situation because he seems to be jinxed there by the way coming in after three weeks one point converts were at 79.2 percent two point converts at 73.7 so almost the same success rate between the two bombers had lost 11 consecutive games here at mcmahon until last november trying to win their second in a row they fake the sweep oh levi mitchell wants more flags fly and he'll be cut down around the 40 yard line as westerman makes the tackle and it looks like holding against Calgary. Well, well, they're holding take. Calgary number 63. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. That's the center lever, too. Bo Levi Mitchell wanted to go deep here, but he got covered from DeMond Washington and Maurice Leggett. He wants to go over the post down here, and he, he gets ready to unload this ball, and number seven drops back and takes it away. 
He's going to get the deep outside with Leggett in the middle, and that takes away double coverage on his deep post. So first to 20. Back on the 25-yard line. To the wide side of the field, open man. And Joe West has a catch. Second catch for West up around the 42-yard line. And 17 yards. It's managing the penalty, managing the negative play to go up and throw it to that sort of fly and die on the outside to Joe West and just have him. It's a long throw to make for Bully by Mitchell, but just try and get the penalty yards back, plus a few, and then get yourself an imaginable second down situation. Buckner the tackle, but now Calgary looks at second and three. Let's go, three. Here's the fly sweep. Anthony Parker to the edge. Drilled down, but not before he has a first down. Great block by John Cornish. In fact, he gets two. He's going to lead out here on this fly sweep to Anthony Parker and gets a couple of key blocks. Starts in the backfield. Parker's coming this way and just follow number nine because he comes out, he gets the chip. First of all, on the second level, just to the left of your screen, you'll see him right there. There's the first one. Now he continues on, and there's one player in pursuit that he can get, and he turns and takes him. Double block there from John Cornish. Devon Washington, the tackle, but Calgary has a first down. Now into the hands of Cornish. He skips to the outside, but Hello Bass stayed with him and shuts him down. Westerman finishes it off, but Bass makes the play. See what basically Khalil Bass saw. Steps up and he's just right in the hole. He's the guy who forced John Cornish to bounce outside and stop his forward momentum. That's just film work. Recognizing the play and being where he's supposed to be. Fifth tackle of the game for the newcomer, weak side linebacker. Second and nine. Mitchell on open man and another first down conversion. Eric Rogers has the catch. Chris Randall had dropped underneath it but was just a little shallow and Bo Levi Mitchell gets it up over the top on this dig route to Eric Rogers. There's a nice jam and now look at Randall how close he was to that play. He gets another yard of depth and he gets an interception just over the outstretched hands of Chris Randall. Greg Newman the tackle Randall with back to back plays to close out the win. Last week against Montreal, 21 for Rodgers and a first down. Stamps are marching. And Cornish has two to three on that last carry. Does Richie Hall go with more pressure now at this point in the game? Starting to get backed up. Try and roll the dice a little bit. Take a chance with some linebacker or secondary pressure. You put your guys in man-to-man, man -man, which is more difficult this year than it has been in the past. A bull Levi Mitchell is finding the holes in the zone. Second and seven against Toronto on Monday. They were over 50%, seven of 13 converting second and seven or more. And, man. and they hand it off and Cornish will be stopped short. But they move it into field goal range. And Rennie Paradez will come on as the teams get the three minute warning here at McMahon in a good tight football game. In for a finish here. Bombers with the lead. But John Huffnagel has Rennie Paradez out to try and give Calgary the lead. Paradez. Surveying a 40 yarder has missed from 26 missed most of the week and has been bothered by a, a sore great groin in in the last couple of weeks. Spent that whole break trying to keep his leg loose. <laughs> from 40 to take the lead and he doesn't miss here. Rennie Paradez has Calvary back on top. 26-25 with just over two minutes to go. Lots of time for Drew Willie. Had some success with the deep ball.
Hold is bang on by Drew Tate. Got their routine. But when you're a quarterback like Drew Willie, you want this scenario. The ball, time on the clock. And a chance to go and put your team in field goal position to knock off the defending champions. On the road. From the 35. Quick hitter to the sidelines. Darvin Adams is there. Deron Mayo and Buddy Jackson rally to the football. But they get around seven on first down. Be tempo now. Get out there. Willie calling on the line. Still going to his wristband. Well, he is going to huddle up. Time not really an issue, is it? No, not really. But you have to have a little sense of urgency. You don't want to take off an extra three or four if you don't have to. In and out of a huddle, I would say, if you're going to huddle. Just make sure you convert. Second and three. Short drop, quick hitter. And they do just that at midfield. Darvin Adams into Calgary territory. And Adams over 100, largely on the strength of that 79-yard touchdown. Willie on this play tonight, he gets he gets press coverage. Darvin Adams up at the top of your screen. And, and you see the hesitation. Buddy Jackson, just before the snap, peeked in and took a look at Willie and then gave up inside position to Adams. But Willie's placement on that throw has been fantastic tonight. Bombers within 10 yards, perhaps, of Tyrolahu Range want even more sideline pattern. and. Buddy Jackson knocks his man out. Darvin Adams another catch. And... Well, he's working on that side. He's He's got something going with Darvin Adams. And the matchup is he against Buddy Jackson. Both the same size at 6'1 and 6'2. Quinn Smith to the sidelines. Jeff Heck sent in by Rich Dubler as an extra defensive back. Second and four. If they don't advance it, it would be a 52-yarder, which would match Hirolahu's season best. And the play doesn't get off. And are they going to call this time count? It would be a loss of downs. Was there a timeout? Time count violation. Winnipeg, number five. That's a loss of down. It will be third down. With the game timer, please reset the clock to 127. One minute and 27 seconds. Got the 20 second clocks in the corner. But a crucial error. And they're going to send the field goal team out, though. Loss of down, and they don't move the football. And so it will be a 52 yarder. Calgary trying to count up and get their field goal return team out there. They think they got enough guys. They were short a man. Guys running in late. This, I think a timeout has to be taken by Calgary. Yeah. Yeah. Timeout, Calgary. Yeah, that's smart. And two returners back in the end zone in case this kick is missed. Tim Brown will try and get it out or either have to kick it out. See, see the left of, left of your screen, the Calgary Stampeders were, were late trying to react to the field goal formation and the field goal personnel sent out by Winnipeg. That was late, too. Ira who went to the sidelines during the timeout. Now he'll come back. Still a minute 27 to go. Hirolahu for the lead, and it's not going to be good. Get it out. Brown will bring it out. It remains a one point. Calgary lead. And Brown upended at the 17 yard line. Not done yet. There's still 73 seconds to go, but now the Bombers need a quick stop. Hirolahu had the distance, it looked like. The hold is from Brian Brom. Take a look at that. Did he get the lace? He got the lace. Barely turned it out side. I'm not sure if Hirolahu got a piece of lace on the long field goal. 
you got to get the lace away from the kicker because that can just throw the flight of the ball off by a few feet and from that far out that'll be enough another Calgary game going down to the wire still may need a first down to wrap this up and Cornish fights his way to the 20 but not much more Cornish wants to stay up like that to try and take yep. an extra second or two off the clock. Timeout, Winnipeg. Winnipeg takes timeout. Bombers stop the clock. And if they can stop Calgary on second and six, they'll get the ball back with some time left. Coaches say every game will come down to four or five plays. Problem is you don't know when those four or five plays could happen. I would suggest this is one of them. And Calgary's got a dilemma here. Six yards to I you. Think, I think you throw the ball, risking yeah. a clock stoppage. I think you go. I think you go get the first down. So you're saying you would throw? Yep. I think you go get the first down. Maybe it's a throw to Cornish. Oh, they hand it off to Cornish, and he is going to be stopped. He'll be short. That's a big stand by the Winnipeg defense. And they're going to get the ball back with about a half minute to go, maybe a little bit more. DeAndre Harland, who replaces Ryan Turner, athletic defensive tackle, helping stuff the play. Stoudemire's back there as well, remember, and they're going to, I'm sure if Winnipeg will try and go after this and block the punter, will they set up the return? He's got to get this bunt in his hands and get what he can, get out of bounds, and then get Drew Willie out there for two or three plays. Stats ace Dave Boyer tells us Rob Mavers average today 44.9. Studemeyer waiting in between the 40 and the 45. Not sure what the delay is here. I'm trying to make sure the clock make is set clock properly, right. yes. Clock to one minute and one seconds. Also reset the 20. Little little home field there. They're going to put the clock back at 101. Last two punts for Maver. And then they reset the 20 seconds, so they'll use all of that. Right. Maver's last two punts under 40 yards. Wind doesn't look like much of a factor. If there is a breeze, it might be in his face. stoudemire has got to catch this in the air. Not let it bounce around, take up valuable time. Line drive will bounce on the carpet. Studemeyer fields it cleanly. 43 yard punt. Studemeyer trying to get outside. That's a mistake. And he's losing yardage. That's a mistake. And he's is dropped. Well, he chewed up yardage and or chewed up the clock and That's a lost some yardage. That's a poor decision. And Rob Cote helps celebrate. Tries. That cover team that was under scrutiny after the Argo game comes up big. Yeah, Troy Studemeyer, though, Chris, has got to know the situation and the time. He's got he's to catch that. He got lucky on the hop. He's got to catch this on the hop. Now get upfield and give your quarterback a chance with about 40 seconds to go. Don't go across the field 65 yards wide. That's a mistake. With that said, there's still time. Drew Willie, half minute to go. Needs about 25 yards. Stands in, throws over the middle, and Jawan yeah, Simpson's got the interception. And that will be ball game. And a young team with a chance to come of age today comes up just a little bit short. And a championship team from a year ago yet again finds another way to win. Jawan Simpson. And when we talked in the first quarter about his leadership abilities, and oh, by the way, when the team needs it, he will make the big play for you. He didn't even move. He just stood right in the middle of the field. Another nail-biter here at McMahon for the defending Grey Cup champions. 
And there's the difference in the ball game. And Drew Willie, I think, explain, yep. explaining to Dominic Picard that he had an open man. He just had to put some more air on the ball. Put a little more air on it. Nick Lewis cheering his old mates. Victory formation here. Layla, Layla, AJ, Mama, Layla. Time now for the Nissan Titan player of the game, brought to you by Nissan, official vehicle of the CFL. Juwan Simpson gets honorable mention for the play of the game, but the player of the game was John Cornish coming out of his own end in the third quarter. He had 15 for 120 on the night. Most of that yardage in the third quarter. 96 yards in the second half. Cornish, our player of the game. A little fracas at the end of this. Game's over. CFL Command Center might have a word or two about this, but John Hupnagel posts a victory in his first game against a Western Division opponent this year and moves to 3-1. and one. And John Hupnagel has his 50th home victory. The Bombers fall to 2-2. Two and two. Good football game here at McMahon. Jawan Simpson helps ice it with that last minute interception. A one point stamp, Peter Wynn, as we say so long, from McMahon. Sports Center coming up next.